Submarine uh, from the Canadian Research Vessel Polar Prince. I'm uh, Chief Petty Officer Robert Simpson, the Assistant Public Affairs Officer for the First, Co First Coast Guard District. Uh, in just a few minutes, or just a moment, I'll be introducing um, Captain Jamie Frederick. He's one of the response coordinator for the efforts, the rescue efforts. Uh, I do ask that after his brief statement, we'll be opening up to some questions for you all. Um, we do have about 10 minutes today, so after his uh, following his statement, uh, we do ask to limit everybody to one question, and we'll try to get around as many as we can. Uh, me and my staff will be available afterwards so that we can take some additional questions uh, that may not have been able to get to or may not answer fully uh, to get your contact information, and uh, our staff will be able to get back to you with that information. This time I'd like to welcome Captain Jamie Frederick, Response Coordinator in the First Coast Guard District. Good afternoon. I'm Captain Jamie Frederick with the First Coast Guard District Response Department, which oversees search and rescue operations under Rear Admiral John Mauger, the First Coast Guard District Commander. I'll provide a brief recap of our coordinated search efforts for the 21-foot submersible with five people on board, along with providing an update on current search efforts and plans for the next 24 hours. On behalf of all the men and women of the United States Coast Guard and our search partners, we offer our most heartfelt thoughts and prayers for the five crew members, their families, and their loved ones. Our crews are working around the clock to ensure that we are doing everything possible to locate the Titan and the five crew members. Yesterday, we stood up a unified command consisting of expertise from the United States Coast Guard, the United States Navy, Canadian Armed Forces and Coast Guard, and the Titan's parent company, Ocean Gate Expedition. This is a complex search effort which requires multiple agencies with subject matter expertise and specialized equipment. While the U.S. Coast Guard has assumed the role of search and rescue mission coordinator, we do not have all of the necessary expertise and equipment retired, required in a search of this nature. The Unified Command brings that expertise and additional capability together to maximize effort in solving this very complex problem. As a recap, on Sunday, the, uh, the Coordination uh, Command Center in Boston received a report from the Canadian Expedition vessel, uh, Polar Prince, of an overdue 21-foot submarine Titan with five people on board. The Titan was attempting to dive on the wreck of the Titanic approximately 900 miles east of Cape Cod and 400 miles south of St. John's, Newfoundland. Approximately one hour and 45 minutes into the scheduled dive, the Polar Prince lost all communication with the Titan. The Polar Prince conducted an initial search and then requested Coast Guard assistance. The U.S. Coast Guard in Boston assumed the responsibility of search and rescue mission coordinator and immediately launched search assets. Since Sunday, the Coast Guard has coordinated search efforts with the U.S. and Canadian Coast Guard, Air National Guard aircraft, and the Polar Prince, which has searched a combined 7,600 square miles, an area larger than the state of Connecticut. These search efforts have focused on both surface, with C-130 aircraft searching by sight and with radar, and subsurface with P-3 aircraft were able to drop and monitor sonar buoys. To date, those search efforts have not yielded any results. Search efforts have continued through last night and today. Today, the vessel Deep Energy, 194 meter pipe laying vessel arrived on scene with underwater ROV capability. They have rendezvoused with the vessel Polar Prince and commenced an ROV dive at the last known of the position of the Titan and the approximate position of the Titanic wreck. That operation is currently ongoing. Additionally, a Canadian P-3 aircraft is currently conducting a six-hour search of the area and several C-130 aircraft and another P-3 are scheduled to fly this afternoon and this evening. The Canadian Coast Guard cutter or vessel, John Cabot, is scheduled to arrive later this evening, and several other Canadian Coast Guard vessels and the Coast Guard cutter Sycamore are en route. Additionally, the U.S. Coast Guard has um, the U.S. Navy's Subsal Supervisor of Salvage and Diving Command is working with U.S. Transportation Command to bring additional assets to the search area. These more cap capable assets will be staged at a St. John's for further transport to the search area. There are also several private vessel, research vessels with ROV capabilities that are making preparations to join the efforts. 
So I want to reiterate, uh, this is a very complex search, and the unified team is working around the clock to bring all available assets and expertise to bear as quickly as possible in an effort to solve this very complex problem. We'll, co we'll continue to provide updates as they become available. And again, our thoughts and prayers are with the crew and the families and their loved ones. We will provide unwavering effort as we continue the search. And I think at this time we'll open it up and take Captain, a few questions. Can you explain yeah. how an ROV, uh, how an ROV would work, sir, tethered to a ship, and what if you can't see the ship? And then could it actually tug or pull So, so each of the ROVs, uh, so, so that's kind of a vague question, right? That uh, ROVs have different capability. It's our understanding the current ROV that is deployed uh, at the site now has some limited capability. Uh, it has a camera on board, um, but, but again, each of those is different. And uh, we'll be gathering more information as that uh, operation uh, goes on through the day. Captain, Captain how many hours of the the NBC News. Uh, If your submersibles can find this sub, is there any way to retrieve it and save the people on board? Yeah, so right now, all of our efforts are focused on finding the sub. Um, what I will tell you is we have a group of, of uh, our nation's best experts in the unified command. And if we get to that point, uh, those experts will be looking at what the next course of action is. Captain, how, how many hours of oxygen are left that you And is it a, has, does it have to be approved or regulated? Sure, so, so first of all, it's, it's an estimate, right? Because we know uh, from the, uh, the, the data we were using uh, as a starting point, 96 hours. We know at this point we're approximately uh, about 40, 41 hours. 41 hours left. Yes. And does it, have to, does it have to be approved or regulated? Is the first of it, does it go through anything through, that you know of? Yeah, I'm not sure uh, of, of the exact technical uh, piece of that. We know there's about uh, there's about 40 hours of, of breathable air uh, left based on that initial report. Again, uh, that was just the initial report based on 96 hours uh, from when the vessel... Um, Captain, so Captain even, even, even with that amount of time that's left, let's say 41 hours or so, if you were to find the submersible at this moment, would that give you enough time to save these five people on board? Yeah, I, so, so I, I don't know the answer to that question. What I will tell you is we will do everything in our power to uh, to effect a rescue. Um, again, uh, it's going to depend on uh, if, if the ROV finds something, it's going to depend on what they find, what what needs to be, uh, what steps need to be taken next. And, uh, and really that is for the experts within the Unified Command um, to take a look at and then and then uh, decide what the best course of action is. It seems to have taken the mothership vessel or those running this operation about eight hours to contact you on Sunday after they lost contact with the sub. Is that a cause of concern? Right now, uh, our effort and our focus is on searching with what we know. Uh, when as soon as we received the report on Sunday evening. We immediately uh, launched search efforts. Uh, we flew assets that evening, and we've continued constant uh, surface and air asset searches uh, since that point. Uh, you, uh, you, 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 you mentioned that the search operation is very complicated. What are the biggest yes. challenges? Well, it, it's a this is a complex search, and um, it's complex for a variety of reasons. Um, we're, we're you know you're talking about a search area that's 900 miles east of Cape Cod. Uh, 400 miles um, south of uh, St. John's. So logistically speaking, it's hard to bring assets to bear. It takes time, it takes coordination. Um, and then we're dealing with, uh, you know, two pieces of, you're dealing with a surface search and a subsurface search. And frankly, that makes it an incredibly complex operation. Captain, Captain will, the Navy, will the U.S. Navy or the Canadian Navy be able to get salvage equipment on time before the air runs out? Obviously, uh, getting salvage equipment on scene is a top priority. Uh, Unified Command is working through that to prioritize uh, what equipment um, we can get there. There are ongoing operations right now uh, via the U.S. Navy and Transcom to get to get equipment uh, staged in St. John's and to get it on scene. I can't give you an exact timeline of when that's going to happen. What I can tell you is uh, there is a full press, full court press effort uh, to get equipment on scene as quickly as we can. Is that equipment, equipment, equipment already equipment? on the East Coast, though, or is it coming from the Pacific, for example? No, the, so some of the equipment that's coming is coming from the East Coast, but again, we're talking about very heavy equipment. Um, it, it's a complicated transport operation, but the best uh, professionals in the world are working it, and that's uh, U.S. Transcom. Yeah, when, when, it, when it comes to the, uh, the equipment, can you go into more detail? Do you have a curve 21 that's uh, 
that's being shipped over to that location. And since you don't have a fleet tug vessel because the, the Apache was decommissioned, what other assets do you have? Do you have civilian ships that can help? Yeah, there, so like I said, there are some there are several civilian ships. Uh, that have offered services heading that way. There are additional Coast Guard cutters. Uh, we hope to have a Canadian Coast Guard cutter on scene this evening. We hope that they may be able to assume on-scene commander. Uh, Polar Prince has been doing a, a great job with those duties, uh, but if we could take some of that uh, from them, uh, that would be good. But your, your question about specific equipment, I, I'm not gonna get into talking about specific equipment. Frankly, I'm not an expert on what that equipment is, but again, I can tell you, we have experts in the Unified Command that are going through that, prioritizing what we need and then how we get it on scene. Well, yeah, really tell us about the personnel from Boston, uh, how many people from here are out there and also what equipment? From Boston specifically? Yeah, from Boston. So the so Boston, where, where Boston plays a role is the, the command center, the rescue and coordination center is here in Boston. Um, the, the aircraft that are coming in are coming from different locations. Um, but uh, but the command uh, structure is, is being worked out of uh, out of Boston. And I think we have time for for two more questions. In all your years of experience, just how unique is this? Has the Coast Guard ever had to deal with anything like this? Well, I yeah, I don't want to speak about it. The Coast Guard has ever. I would tell you it's a unique operation. It's a challenging operation. Um, but uh, but right now we're focused on on uh, putting everything we can at it and uh, and, and searching um, as hard as we can and getting the assets out there. Um, as quickly as we can. And so, is, is, is it the other assets that are rushing to the area? What sort of assets do they have? Do they have ROVs? They have similar technology to OTBs? Yeah, there, so there, there are some additional assets with, with ROVs. Um, there is uh, one asset that, may, that is working to get on scene with a decompression chamber. Um, so those are all pieces that are coming together, and, uh, and we're working those logistical challenges to get them, uh, get them there. And I think we'll take uh, one more. Is a deep sea rescue a realistic well, I, I can't tell you exactly what it would look like. I would tell you that, uh, you know, we are out there, we're searching. We, we wouldn't be doing this. We wouldn't be searching and putting all effort out there. Um, I think that, you know, if the sub is located, that's a question that then, then the, uh, the experts need to look at what is the best course of action uh, for recovering the sub. But I think it's going to depend on that particular situation and, uh, and if we encounter that. Sir, is it true that the British offered assistance and they were told we don't need your assistance at this point? No, I'm, I'm not aware of that. Again, what I would tell you, though, is that the Unified Command is working through, uh, working through prioritizing. We, and we know that there's equipment out there um, that can be brought uh, to the scene. Um, the Unified Command is working through prioritizing what equipment we need and then how we get it there. And the so, French are also responding to the ship as well? Yes, it's my understanding, correct. What and uh, I think we're going to wrap there. it there. Yeah. Yep, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys coming out today. Blew this portion of the brief on there. Um, I can stay behind just to take some uh, additional stuff that maybe wasn't answered. We can try to get some information back to you um, kind of a little bit later. Can you clarify the, the question yeah. about the men and women here who are based in Boston? Yeah. So are they not out there? Are they just working here? Right. So the, uh, the rescue coordination center that he's talking about specifically that's based in Boston. So the personnel that are working in the command and control environment as far as uh, uh, building a lot of the search and rescue plans, sending out the information, coordinating those pieces are here. The uh, the people affecting the mission, so the pilots, the air crews, uh, all of the ships, those are based out of different areas. So our pilots, air crews are out of Elizabeth City, North Carolina. The Coast Guard Cutter Sycamore, I believe, is out of uh, Newport, Rhode Island, uh, but they were operating already in the Arctic. So it, there are a number of people that are here working in that staff element, but are not physically located out in the search area, so if that makes sense. Control, right? It is, yes. Does Ocean Gate have another submersible that they could try to send down there? I don't know. I don't know. It sounds like, for the most part, the Stitching area is moving to St. John's. So, yeah, I believe, yeah, a lot of it into to St. John, uh, Newfoundland, right? Yes. Yeah. That's what, so our uh, aircraft, the C-130 aircraft, are they're based out of there as well. So I know there is a number of, of uh, pieces going out there logistically it's easier so as opposed about, to here. We talked about Transcom uh, organizing the different assets available. I asked Transcom and they kicked it over to you guys. Okay. So can you give a little bit more clarity on what kind of assets you have put in the water? I specifically asked about the Curve 21. But we didn't yeah. say, uh, is there one on the way? I don't know. I don't know to answer that. Um, so I know a lot of those questions weren't were unanswered on there and, and it's a lot of it's because we're not the right agency to be asking that. I know as in the command, we should be uh, to be the one to give the answer to you, but we want you guys to hear it from the subject matter experts. 
Uh, so that's our next plan is what we want to do is give an opportunity for you all to have to get all of the subject matter experts we can into one location to kind of get those questions answered um, to give you kind of the best thing we can do. Do you, I, you yeah. anticipate in, that, in those 40 hours when that becomes a recovery mission if you choose to do a recovery mission? Is that sorry, when, when, when those 40 hours yeah, are up that yeah. I gave for the estimate, mm -hmm. is that the moment you shift from a search and rescue to a recovery operation if you choose to do a recovery operation, given the difficulties? I, I think it really depends on a number of factors. So anything that could change between now and then as far as uh, information response, you know, things like that that could change that. So it's not a hard and fast, um, you know, timers up, time to transition. There's a lot of factors that go into it um, that could extend. Uh, so something what, like that. Excuse me, what role does the oxygen, amount of oxygen play in one of those factors? And with 40 hours of oxygen left, when would you then transition from a search and rescue to a search and recovery? I don't know. I don't know an answer to that. That's that's definitely outside, but we can try to get back to as we transition through that phrase. We'll have better answers for that. Is there information about the conditions out there? Like what exactly are is the Coast Guard facing? So the weather wise, yep. So actually, I have. Um, I believe the weather on scene today uh, was uh, five to six foot seas. Um, so wave height, five to six feet. Um, I believe it was 15 knot winds. Um, visibility was was very foggy yesterday with very little nose visibility, uh, but was was um, increasing today, and they were expecting better, much better conditions uh, from an aerial search perspective. So it's going to very waves today. Yes. I uh, was 15 knot winds. So uh, in terms, it's it's um, it, it's not it, it's about average out there, right? How long would it take a typical Coast Guard vessel from the U.S. or for that matter from Newfoundland to get on site if they're running at maximum speed? That depends on the cutter itself or the ship itself because they all have different speeds. Yeah. Um, do you have an average, just so we have a feel for how long it would take to get there? Well, depending on where they're coming from, uh, it could be a matter of, you know, two days up to four to five days. It just depends on where they would be deploying from. Two so, days from Newfoundland, for example? I don't know. We don't have any ships up in there. So That's a night question. That. Canadian, we're, we're trying to find out more information on the Canadian vessels that are assisting on there, sort of what their capability and speeds are. I just don't have an answer for you on that right now. Does the Coast Guard have a line on a piece of equipment that is capable of going down to the Titanic? The Coast Guard specifically, no. Um, this this type of a salvage operation in our expertise as an organization is no. In terms of yeah. private companies, if you reach so you that's all part of the conversation with the Fight Command to to find out what capabilities are out there and explore all avenues that they so can. You're looking at the that now. Guard, the Coast Guard is usually pretty quick about releasing videos and photos and yep. things like that from their operations. Is there a specific reason why you have this this operation? We just yeah. haven't received any yet at this point. Then you don't expect much. We do. We do expect to get some. Um, like you said. Uh, we do have uh, some graphics that we're trying to look to send out this afternoon, um, as well as we've, we've reached out to the aircraft crews to get uh, footage from them. Now I know with the the ROVs that are on scene today, uh, like I said, there just hasn't been any before. So we have are, are, are requesting out there to try and see what we can get to go through that and try to make that available to you all. I don't have an I don't know. I don't the have an answer to that. The Coast Guard assets itself, no, we do we do not have any Coast Guard cutters on scene. No, so the research vessels I just don't know what the capabilities are at that. Do you think it's pretty unrealistic that it has made its way to the surface and it's waiting to be spotted? Because you've done all of these aerial searches, so you quite often it's in the weeds. That's why we have both types of assets, because we don't want to exhaust one uh, possibility in vice of another. So we don't want to rule out that it is um, on the surface. Likely. And the way that our crews train, this is the environment they train and they're, they're specialized in being able to see these things from the air. So they've, they've given everything that they have to it. And if it's on the surface, we're, we're fairly certain that we would be able to find it. We would it fly down? No, that we, that we will find it if it is on the surface. Do you think it's more likely it's not? It's, it's, it's impossible to say. Can I just ask you to 
I, I realize this may be challenging, you may not have the answer, yeah. but we're trying to get a sense of how far away the nearest naval asset would be that has that lift capability, salvage capability. Is it coming from North Carolina, from Florida, from Boston? Any Can you give us any idea of how far away it might be? Yeah, I, don't have, I don't have an answer to that. Yeah. Do you know if anybody, um, do you know if that vessel has a pinger or some other way of communicating other than text? From the research vessel? The Titan. Yeah. Oh, communicating with them? No, yeah. I don't have specifics on technology on board. We understand they've lost contact in the past on other expeditions. Has the Coast Guard ever been involved with them? Not, not to my they, knowledge. It, but Ocean Gate is cooperating with the investigation. Absolutely. They're, so yeah, they're, they're part of the unified command in here, so we're all making decisions together. So does they, do they have anything else that could close out? Searching out to I don't know. Um, but if they do, it's definitely being discussed as far as their capabilities. Would they tell you if they did? Mm -hmm. I mean, so it doesn't sound that hopeful to me on this report. I don't understand. Like, it sounds like the nearest vessel that could, it's not clear how long it would take to get a vessel there. Right. And that, that's just the biggest part of the challenge of all of this, is trying to understand how the capabilities are working together, how they would do it, the tactical aspect of that. So if you're a family member of somebody on board, what should they be thinking? Do you have a message? I think it was it was clearly stay with with Captain Frederick on there. Can you could we ask you could you just describe if, you know the, the crush depth here? We're we're talking about 400 times, as I understand it, what we all experience at sea level. What can that do to a, a vessel? I can't I can't speak to the scientific side of that. Um, again, this is just more or less trying to get some background information for you guys on there. I don't have any of that information on that. Can you tell us about what the um, circumstances were? And that would be a, a great question that we could try to get asked for you with that subject matter expert um, discussion that we, we talked about for the to get an opportunity for you guys to ask that question. Because it would be much more important and, and realistic for somebody within that community uh, part of the command that would be able to answer that question a lot clearer than anything I, could, I would be able to. So, and yes, when, when might you provide your next update? Uh, so we do have a press uh, release that's going to be going out shortly with the graphics we talked about. Um, probably similar information to what was passed today. Um, if any new information comes up, we'll update that. Um, but I think ideally we'd be putting out press releases daily and um, we'd look at probably doing another briefing tomorrow. Can I just ask you one last... Sorry, what's hold? I don't know. Could you just reiterate for us, I'm just... How big of an urgency is this for the Coast Guard? How big of a priority? Do you prioritize these things? In other words, do you classify them as priority red, one, two, three? How, how big of a priority is this? This operation is our top priority right now, um, you know, within the district. We have, uh, you know, every available asset that we can uh, that's to this, that we can dedicate to it on this. Um, that's the, why we are, are spending so much time and energy trying to coordinate uh, really this enormous response effort um, to truly understand the scale of how far away this truly is um, and in the context of the types of assets that we can get out there over something that's that enormous something larger than the state of Connecticut and a perspective of what is available to be able to search in those kind of conditions so far offshore to understand what 900 miles looks like um, it is an enormous amount of distance I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it would look like. Um, realistic, and, and that's that's all part of the conversation that you find command. They're looking at doing everything that they can to find out the options that are available. Thanks. So. And family Thank members you. have indicated the five people on board, but is there an official manifest or, or log saying exactly who was on that vessel? There is. Uh, Will that on be there. released publicly? So the not until all the next notifications have been completed um, through that process can we release names in that way. I know that some have gotten out, but they have not been through us. Okay. Thank but, you so much. Yeah, thank you. I really thank appreciate you your time today. Thank you. And uh, we'll send out an update when the next uh, advisory or, or um, uh, uh, advisory will be out for you guys. Are there any briefings happening at the same time? Not that I'm aware of. Um, that nothing that we are setting up. Okay. Now, I don't know if... 
they are up there independently. I, I'm hoping that they would they would at least reach out to us to let us know so we could help kind of amplify that. But no. If the Canadian All right, so you are watching the U.S. Coast Guard Captain Jamie Frederick news conference after a submersible taking wealthy tourists to visit the site of the Titanic wreckage in deep waters of the coast of Canada went missing. Actually, briefing media on submersible such 900 miles east of Cape Cod and such area the size of Connecticut says more resources are being put out to the scene, says they are working around the clock too for a successful.